following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Monday. Monday, the 28th of March, last February, the last day of February, and tomorrow we start off the new month. So we're going to be looking at these candles on the right here. This is the monthly chart of the, of the uh, Dow. Down, down, down is, let's see, 33,624, down 434, off the, the early morning futures low. But what's really important is at this moment it's holding the 14 period moving average, but it is looking weak with the MACD just about to go negative and the stochastic still good at 84% and the on balance volume pulling back. That's a monthly chart. The weekly chart is folding just a little bit of this candle. Um, this is going to be important as well over, over the coming two weeks. If there is a close under 33,150, that was the low that was made back in, that was the 24th of January. If there is a close below that, then that uh, 32,272 level is going to become a target because you're making lower lows and lower highs. More importantly, in the daily chart, you've got resistance at 33,945. There is just so much going on. And as I said in my um, market uh, uh, news break at 10 o'clock, it's one thing climbing a wall of worry, which the uh, Dow usually likes to do, or the general market likes to do. But it's another thing climbing a barbed wire fence. So there are a lot of obstacles in the way. If the market can just hold steady for a little while, that'll alleviate some of the tensions as things get filtered out. Nuclear war, I doubt we're going to nuclear war. Um, but there, a lot of things can happen. And we're looking at different prices. We'll get to them in a moment that are going to impact. I'm also going to show some of the commodities, what's happening in the commodity area, including, as uh, Coda says in the den, uranium. So let's just move on to uh, the S&P. At this point, the S&P is down uh, 46 and 43.37. Those spectacular two days, the turnaround on Thursday, and then certainly for the Dow, 800 points up. And what happened was the shorts, the shorts thought, oh, we've got a chance to cover. We'll wait, we'll wait. And then there was just a little moment where at about 2.30 or 3 o'clock, the market pulled back. They said, oh, this is it. We'll, we'll be falling into the close. And then the markets all closed at their highs. Look at this. The S&P closed right. It went right through the nine-period expansion moving average, smacked right up against the 14-period moving average. And then stalled, and that was right at the top. And as I said to subscribers, I said 43.82. That's almost like a Morbosa candle in the uh, that's a candle, a big candle, either green or red, that has no wick. Well, they had a little bit of a wick at the bottom, the Dow barely had a wick. So that usually says doji candle the following session, unless there's just a follow through huge expansion to the upside, which would look almost impossible over the weekend. Oh, there's a pretty sharp pullback of about 30%. Um, and it could sometimes be just 30% or 20% of the last hour's big move to the upside. I said to subscribers, we could see a move of about 30 to 40%. It was actually 50% in the futures. This holding pattern that we see right now is really important because this whole candle here is going to be the key metric, because if we start to take out the low of Friday in the S&P's case, 4286, that is really bad action. If we're looking at the QQQ, holding quite nicely now, down about two and a quarter at 343.90. It didn't have as big a move. And there are some, some areas within the NDX 100 that are actually on a percentage basis are moving better. Uh, if you have fewer stocks in that sector, but specific stocks, it could be QQQs on steroids. We've actually got a position in one of those things. Uh, but 
it's a small position. I'm not prepared to get carried away here. I don't mind missing some of the I'd rather start to see higher highs and higher lows to be able to give me some sense of a decent support level than to say, I know everything. We're going absolutely fully long position. No, no, no. We, we don't have any shorts right now. We have very specific longs. And they worked so far. Almost all of them have been working so far. Um, now we get what we're going to look at is within the context of the uh, indices, the IWM down 84 cents at 201.61. We're following this really closely. Why? Because it's one of the more successful patterns of the Chapman Wave um, dreaded H formation where you take out the left side low after fading at a peak B. That became a peak B minus. I forgot to correct that. That's a B minus because it, it failed. It took out the left side low. And we're going to be watching this just to see maybe there's more upside going into an arch from a second arch formation into the 207 to 8 level. I might just use it as an indicator rather than to do any buying. I just I, I want the buying for subscribers to my opening call right now to be very selective. We, it just you have no choice. So it made that rectangle formation, long rectangle formation in the weekly chart. Look at this goes on for it's almost a year since March of 2000. And 21 at 234.53 high to the 207.21 low. Um, is, I think it was still March. Yep, still March. And then we stayed in a rectangle formation with just one quick pop to a, a peak D. That's the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave. And then we pulled back and we went right through after the dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h fails and goes to the downside to that low of 187.92 on Thursday. So what it's saying is that it's not in play for the upside at this particular point, but it is in play for a holding position that at this point, as a, just as a chart pattern in the daily, is holding better than the others, not so much in the weekly. And the monthly chart has already confirmed the peak D with the MACD week, stochastic week, the on-balance volume holding quite well. Yet that nine period moving average is still way above the 14. Oh, before I forget, I, I, I had a, the fortune on Friday to be able to hear yeah, Tom O'Brien's show. And, and Tom show, he, was, he had a caller who was talking about um, using the nine period exponential moving average, which is something I've used for just a long, long time uh, as a key metric. Well, if you were looking at that and you're treating it as a trading position, yeah, just have a look at this. In the 10 minute chart, when the, my technicals, the way I use the technicals, close positive uh, around about 5.20 in the morning on Friday, on Thursday. No, is that Friday? What day is that? I can't see. Yeah, the 25th. Yeah, that's Friday. Once it turned positive, it stayed positive through all the different Chapman wave techniques, through all the Fibonacci numbers, through all the volume numbers, through all my unbalanced volume numbers, through everything, all the way through until the close. And even then, it looked like it was going to pull back. That's when the when uh, players in the market at 2 o'clock said, aha, we'll stay short. And then they had to start covering, going to into the close. And then it made this big C1, C2 double top. And only on that smash to the downside on Sunday night did it turn negative. So that's one of the ways that you can use the um, the nine period moving average, but you have to use it judiciously, and yet I prefer to use it with other indicators. That nine kept you in the trade all the way through, and I'll show you this morning's trade as well. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's the Chapman Dow's down 408. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. Just wanted to use, I guess, the use of the night grid moving average of high books is a pretty important component. I just wanted to talk about it. And as I say, I heard uh, I call it, uh, calling to uh, Tom O'Brien, and Tom gave him really good information about how he uses volume. Uh, all of these things are important. You don't have to use any particular one. You could use a mix. You could ignore it. You could. It's just how you use it is the most important thing. And be consistent. So, look, even today, I didn't believe this myself. In fact, I didn't even do anything. I was just watching. I couldn't believe it. So the 200 period moving average, this pink line and the 10 minute E mini chart, look, crosses positive, goes to peak C and D and pulls back and holds steadily on all these moving averages. And then it goes peak A, peak E slash B alternate count because it looked like uh, the stochastic was pulling back. It goes to C and a D, pulls back, saw a brand new move, goes to E and F, has three uh, candles with, with a, just about the same high, all four together, pulls back, and then goes quickly to peak A, peak B, peak C, and a D. And all of a sudden, you're now up only 58 points, uh, down 58 points at 4322 when you were up very much more earlier on. And we haven't yet in the 10 minute chart crossed negative. So that's important. But yeah, look at the difference in the one minute chart. It goes positive. Right there, just for a brief one bar, it went negative, then positive, and right at about 43.26, it goes positive, and it was really whippy. If you were in this, you wouldn't have believed it, but you were held, you kept your position. If you use the technique that I try to talk about all the time, then it goes peak A, B, C, and it goes to a D. Fourth highest peak is where you've got to be careful. Yellow light flashes, turns around and comes down, and it's pink. And all of a sudden, the nine period moving average has gone underneath, the price has gone underneath the 200 period moving average. So it's how you use these things, um, just it's really important. All right, let's get back to our story. So we were talking about the IWM. Now, this is important because for me, the semiconductor index down 388 at 266.50 SMH. This to me is really key to the overall market. One of the reasons why. Um, we've raised cash and we, we're considering that the whole panoply of um, it, it, the different facets that are going on right now, both internally, that's the United States, externally, and geopolitically, as well as geoeconomically, 
is really important. There's such a, a, a mishmash of, of things going on that three weeks ago, four weeks ago, were in play, but only more what I call trading in play. Now there are actually, now these are trends that you have to consider to be weekly trends. And I'll go through them right now. Look, gold. Gold is now off its high today. The high was in the continuous contract, 1935. It did 1976 a few days ago, plunged down to the 1882 level. And now look at what we're doing. We're holding near the highs. The, the monthly chart is starting to improve, although the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line did work as a repellent line. But look at this weekly. You know, I talk about a rectangle formation. In fact, I've got a couple. Hopefully, I'll remember and have time today talking about a couple of rectangle formations. I draw these and I draw them in as saying, for my eye, I don't do them. I, I, Steve has done some really good work um, uh, following up on Bud Rolfs uh, to do with um, uh, parameters, horizontal parameters. I, I do something very different. I came to this all very visually years and years and years, decades ago. Um, so I'm very visual. I can see a rectangle formation, meaning that between 1950s, not the year, 1950s, and the and seven, let's call it 1700, it goes to 10 under, but let's call it 1700. There's really a big rectangle formation. And gold has just been in that position for a long time. And what's really important about this is that we snuck above it. We went right to that target that I had. If you look at my left side, right side, price time match, and using the fulcrum right there of the full week of the 4th of June with a high of 1928, my target was all of these left side highs of 1980, uh, 1980 to 19, I think it was 86, not 1990. So that went all the way back to the starting point around about the 25th of September of 20. Uh, 2020. Well, we just hit that, bam, it went right there, and now it's pulled back. So all with this whole conflagration going, we don't, to me, gold is really an, it's, it's an emblem, it's an icon and an emblem as a barometer of fear. Yeah, it has a whole bunch of other implications, um, although probably in usage, silver gets more use uh, in the economy than gold, not the point. Point is that historically, ever since the beginning of time, gold has been where not just regular human beings, or that's where, what happens, but countries go to gold. So why isn't gold screaming at the 2100 level higher than the, that high that was made in the continuous contract back in the week of the 7th of August 2020 at 2113? Surely by now we should be much higher. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on. Like a magician, you 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 know you use you know remember, we don't even see them anymore. But you remember in New York for those who used to go there uh, a couple of decades ago, you had those guys on the street with their little pea what do they call the pea pods or whatever it is, and they juggle those things. I once saw someone. I was just standing there watching. Lose, I, I couldn't even tell you. The, the dollars just kept, they just kept losing and losing. It kept saying, Oh, yeah, I, I'm getting this thing. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible to watch. Anyway, um, what I'm looking at here is that the juggling is saying so far, and this is just so far, gold is holding back a little bit because there are so many things going on right now within this, uh, let's just call it the insurgence that's gone, that's a real insurgence that's gone right into um, into the Ukraine. And at the same time, the defense makers, are, and, and bravo to, I mean, these regular people, uh, um, you know, doing the best they, they can, holding back the Russians. I, I, I could have just imagined the, the Russian soldiers, first of all, they, they not sure why they're there, I'm sure. And the other thing that I'm always, I remember this with the Croatia. Um, you know, you actually, you're fighting your cousins in many cases. Could even be your brothers and sisters or sister-in-law, brother-in-law. This is really, it's ugly. It is just such a human tragedy. Anyway, let's get away from that. Talking about gold. I'm talking about gold and I'm saying 
that gold is saying just at this particular moment that the worst isn't there. Okay, but wait a minute. Silver, and I'll just do silver because it was just silver. Silver had a big spike up in the weekly chart, and now it's pulled back a little bit as a 2453. Silver's almost always a lagging, and then when it really kicks in under normal market conditions, gold is really close to suddenly pulling back. But let's just say silver at this particular point at any time, let's call it this week. If silver's trading above 27, I suspect that gold will be trading, oops, gold will be trading a lot higher, at least 50 points higher. Let me just get to this if I can stop typing in again. There's a lot to do today and I haven't even finished them halfway through the show. Yeah, gold will be above the high at 1976,000. That's the case. Then we go. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we're back, and let me just see what does Larian MLP do? I guess that's what it looks like. Oh, Larian MLP do. I think I've typed that incorrectly. Uh, MLP Primer, Larian MLP Index is a leading gauge of energy infrastructure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. This had every, all the signs of, a, of an energy. So the question is, uh, I believe I've got that right. So the question is, I would like to add to it, and what, where should I get in? I'm just going to say right here at 37.11, it, it's got a falling axe formation in the daily. 
and it's gone above it. The day is young. You, if it, if it, at the end of the day, if it closes under thirty six forty, you could be a tad early. That's why I just say start starter of your next position here. But I'd split it into two probably. The weekly chart has gone to a peak F. Uh, pull back that was back in uh, June of last year up in the 39 area takes a, a couple of dives down there's a one to one uh, extension to the downside to 30 and now it's had a high of 38.64 in most recent um, month of February pulls back to the 34 there 34 four point decline and I have to call this a peak B at this particular point in the week. I give, it's a great peak B because it's under the previous one. Most importantly, the MACD is good in the in the weekly chart, not the day. The daily's had a lot of pullback technically, and the nine period moving area is under the four team. So that's why I'm saying a little starter position here for your add on. Most importantly, what I'm looking at is within the context of the weekly chart. Let me expand this. I don't want to do this just isolated with a little window that I'm looking at here. This W formation, which is what you mentioned to me, I like that very much. Uh, I'm going to call it just instead of drawing two, two U-shaped patterns, I'm making it just one. And it went back in the same time frame, but it just missed making the new high of 38.6 of 3893. Now, you remember we spoke about this over and over all, I mean, for months now. I've been saying these stocks that come to within pennies of the previous high, normally I'd suggest be real careful because this pullback could extend down, but it's in an area of energy. Energy is everything you read right now says. Energy is going to be the the one thing you have to keep your eye on, and this administration has to keep its eye. Why why are we not talking about um, opening up our spigots to use energy if we need it here? Why we haven't talked about? Yes, it could be ameliorated. I know this. You have to consider the whole uh, um, pollution area has to be discussed, but is you know you got to you got to weigh lives to your environment. And sometimes you just have to make a compromise. And if it means that if we are starting to flood the market again with oil, Putin's lost a huge thing. What? I mean, he's just lost his, his, his financial capacity. That's, that's what he's leveraging. So I would just say this is, I don't know specifically in which energy area these guys are in, but you want to see this, um, Extend. So what I'm going to say, because it's the area XL, I don't know if it's in the XLE, I'm probably not. I'm just going to do the XLE. You remember we spoke about the weekly chart at peak C and that there should be a leg C to the upside in the XLE. Well, it also had a little bit of a pullback like that Chapman falling X in the daily. And now the XLE is up 78 cents to 69, 66. I think these are in play for a little while to come. I don't know how little while, but it's going to be in play. So I'm just saying I like the area. I didn't like the chart pattern all the much when it was making the, the double top, but it's in the right area and it held very well. So I'm going to say I would I would consider at least uh, starting. And if it actually closes towards the high of the day, as it's moving, it's at, oh, now it's at 69.59. Um, you know, I'm going to say a little bit more than, a, a, you could just start a two thirds of your new position here and I would then add to it, and I just have a little bit of a cushion because if this suddenly starts to trade in the next two days below 67.90, then it says, uh oh, sideways, sideways at worst, but heading towards the highs. So keep keep that in mind. Next question. I have, oh, thank you for that question. And the next one is, um, oh, we got White Shark in a native native mass. Hi, how are you? Uh, good morning, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So, Sharky, what do you want to look at? Uh, I wanted to look at SD there. I uh, was looking at it on the daily and the weekly. It looks like the stochastic is, uh, uh, you know, over the 80. The the 9 is over the 14. It looks like on the daily, I may be wrong about that, but is that in the peak C on, on, on the uh, daily? So let's look at this. This is SD is uh, Sandridge Energy Inc. Do you know specifically which part? Is this oil and gas? 
I'm not sure. I, I, not I think sure. it might. I'll, I'll check it out in a moment. Let's just get to the notation. So in the daily chart, I've got peak A, peak B, doji candle, and then it goes to a peak C, and then it has a sideways consolidation, and then it goes to today's leg up is a D. There are a number of these issues. In fact, for subscribers, I'm going to show you something very interesting in a moment. Hopefully, I'll have time. Um, and that was those screamers that I was talking about that had spectacular moves, and yet they still looked like they could move today. Some of them actually moved even higher today. It's unbelievable. When something's in play and demand is there, these things can really move. So this looks... Uh, the weekly chart looks a little bit like what we were looking at a moment ago for um, the, the question I had about AMLP. And if I meant to write this down, AMLP. And now you've got SD. So um, do you have a position at all? Are you looking to get in? What's the, what's the story? Uh, looking to, you know, I was noticing that, you know, we're, we're in a D. You know, PC definitely in the daily, but, you know, the D is, is you know, um, that's the next, but I don't have a position. I, and I, I looked at the weekly, and, and I thought that the stochastic was, you know. Um, so this is a you know, stock I, that's up 64 cents today, 13.68. The fact that it's low priced doesn't make it cheap, doesn't make it expensive. It means just that it's low priced. So that you can't put it together in the same category as something else that is perhaps a superior company that has a higher um, a higher price. So remember, price, very often price is a factor over the years of, um, it's funny, I'm going to talk about it in a way that probably is not what you should do, but it's a, it's a respect. The longer something's in play and the more people and more institutions that are buying it, very often the higher the price. When you look at PE multiples and all that, you can get a price like SD at 13.64. At it could offer you even more percentage gains than the others because it's lower price. But you've got to consider that it's in a different category. It's in a different category in terms of the weighting that I would give it as fund managers' portfolios. The majority of fund man manager for portfolios would have say uh, SU, which is uh, uh, Sun Sunoco Energy, which is at 30. And then if you had to go to something like uh, uh, SO, Southern, what is that? Southern Company, now that doesn't, didn't work. So I'm just saying to you, the price is not what we're looking at. So give me a second. I want to do just a little bit of work. I actually want to see what they're doing. We'll be right back. We'll be back with Sean. Okay, thank Making you. Us. In a moment, we're looking at SDs this morning. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here. Dow's come back very nicely. It's down just 297 at this particular point. S&P is down just 23. Remember, it was down 120 or more earlier on. So what I'm looking at here is, Sharky, I'm looking at 1367 right now, um, up 63 cents. I have, if this is a daily chart, if it's able to hold 13.30 to $13 support over the next two days, the next target I have between today and tomorrow would be the 14.19 the area. That's, that's really much higher. If it manages to keep going and keep making higher highs and higher lows, kind of what it's done, then the high that was made on the 12th of November at 14.99, yeah. that, that would be my target for it, which is a point and a half. Uh, that's a very nice 9 to 10% gain. Yeah. And that would be before... Uh, March the, uh, this, what are we doing here? This is, so, yeah, before March the, by the end of next week. So this has to yeah, accelerate Mark, now. Just, just uh, excuse me, just so everyone knows, the earnings come out on March 2nd. So earnings uh, oh, uh, after the market on March 2nd, that's just, when, just to let you know. Well, from what I'm looking at, the earnings should be good. I mean, that's the way it's looking mm. right now. It's held beautifully. And then monthly chart starts leg C, if we can go to $15.00. Um, there's no time on that. That's what I'm saying. So I like yeah, it. Yeah. You just got to be careful that at that 1480 to 1510 level, if it gets there, that's where you could see a lot of resistance. But that'll be your pleasure if you're along getting from 1362 to $15. So I hope that helps yeah. you. Yeah, it does. Thank you very much, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. Always appreciate it. Let's go to Earl in Seminole. Earl, how are you? God, enjoying this Florida weather, Basil. Oh, just rub it in. Go on, just rub it in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I'd like to have you take a look at the TLT. I've been short it for a while. And, uh, a long time, good. If I'm looking at an exit point now. So I, I spent a little time with this over the weekend and also showed my subscribers some opening call. We were looking at the triple yield chart. That's the 30, the, the 10, and the five-year yields. Um, we're, we're getting close to some kind of resistance in the yields. And that, so this is what I'm thinking. Under the market conditions, and you know that, although he, he doesn't talk about it per se, from the evidence that we've seen with Powell, he's one of the few, even though people say, Oh, the Fed is non-political. We know they're political. We know that there's a whole bunch of things going on. Political in the sense that, and not party-wise, but political in the sense that they have to, they have to use slate of hand as well. So what I'm thinking here is that with the conditions that we're looking at in the overall geopolitical economic era and sorry area. Um, there's a really good chance that they do. They say they're going to give us at least a quarter, maybe even a half, but they, they tell us exactly what they're going to do. But then they say it's going to be an initiation move to this, not sporadic now, but a consistent way of looking at the chance of raising rates. 
for, and you and I have actually spoken about this for years. We've said, surely in really good economic conditions, the norm is that rates go higher because there's a demand for loans, and that is paralleled with good economic. I mean, people are prepared to pay up if they think they're going to make more money by using that money judiciously. So this is a, a really weird thing, and it started off from the 2008-2009 financial debacle. So what we're really looking at here is there's a mantra, there's a, there's a, there's a, a kind of a persistent mode that's been in place for so long that there were opportunities all the way that they could have changed that and they never did. So are they going to do it now when we've got this, this international crisis looming? I think they're going to say, what will the market accept? And I think the market will accept the fact that they, gain, they are, rates can go, rise by themselves, as we know, in all this time, the the year the T bonds went the TLT went from 190 back in 2019 100 sorry 112 all the way to 180 or 179 70 in March, and it it got yields coming down and ever since then yields have kind of been going up except for one big bounce but now they so I, what they say and the impact that it has on the market. They might be surprised that the market is trying to look through this all. So I think we're getting to a point here where the, the, the TLT going down and having rates rise could take withstand another test of 134.98, which was the low that was made around about the 14th of Feb. We've gone up to 139. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I would actually do it in a, I would do it in a, a rotating way. I would take off a little bit right now, because even if they do something, even if it's a big move, you're in, in such a position that you, you give up a little bit of a gain, but it's better to be secure in having the trend change significantly. And this change, the trend will only change, at least for the downside, if the bonds can hold in the 141 and they not, you know, in this market turmoil, you would expect that money would migrate from this insecurity of equities into the security, the safety of bonds. And uh, we haven't seen it. We just haven't seen it. And that tells me that no matter what we're looking at, there, at least in the six to 10 week time frame, those yields are probably going to go higher yet and that the TLT will go down. But in the meantime, you can have a pretty decent bounce. So I don't know if you're really looking at the bounce to make any changes. And all I would say is, you know, at this particular point, let the Fed do what it does. And maybe you can just take a little bit off to say, hey, I, I don't have to com commit myself to an opposing opinion until the Fed actually shows me. But mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the Fed is going to do something and try to be as clear as possible so that the market, you know, I love to say the market, uh, people say the market hates uncertainty. And I say, no, every day is uncertain. It hates uncertainty about uncertainty. And that's kind of where we are. So if the Fed clears it up and says economic conditions are improving in some areas, but the, the, the and they might have to mention inflation, maybe they don't want to, but inflationary aspects, especially when Ukraine, I, I read it the other day, they import, what is this? They import uh, potatoes, rye, beet products, wheat, chicken eggs, cheese exports, barley. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, and I, I just think that what we're looking at here, uh, I just want to see the other things, that the inflationary aspect is going to be something that they, they might have to worry about um, I think that the part for the yields is just that they've spoken about it, they feel obligated to do it, and I think they will just start off and say, this is the sequence that we're looking at, and we'll go one by one. If they start off with a bit of a bump of 50, 50 uh, basis points, uh, you know, uh, maybe that'll shake the market. But I, I think taking a little bit off now kind of alleviates for you some of that and lets the market tell you after that which way it's going to go. Does that help you a little? Yes, Basil. Uh, I really appreciate you. You got uh, the best outlook and I agree totally with what you said.
Ah, that's because I you agree with me. You think it's good. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks. Sharpening Thank your you. skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And um, just showing this chart here, this is the Sandwich Energy, Inc., to show the cup formation and how I've used the left side, right side price time match. It isn't uh, to the exact low. That The deepest low was right on the 200 period moving average. It's like a gravy cup. You have to move it a little bit to the left or the right because the plumb line isn't in the middle. It could turn out to be the middle, but I'm using uh, this right here uh, around about the 12th of January as the midpoint for the right side. And that's what I'm looking at. Um, a couple of things came in. Just let me look at them uh, quickly. Uh, yeah, a lot of talk about Russia. At this particular point, I think we have to be separated. You have to consider that other things are happening. If you're looking at, uh, I, I'd shown this the other day. Uh, I was talking about it. Just this is uh, CRM, which is salesforce.com. Look, look at this down channel. Look at this move from 311 down to the most recent low of 184. That is huge. Don't tell me that what's going on around the world is really going to stop an oversold situation from becoming at least a short term, more than a bounce, but at least starting off as a bounce. And that's the reason why I'm saying, and I said to subscribers over the weekend, we have a position, we have in what I call uh, the queues on steroids, and the queues are up now uh, 0.25, up 85 cents, uh, 25 percent, up uh, 90 cents at 346.75, and I have no idea if this is going to work. And we have something that's 
in the same area, but at much fewer stocks. And it's up 4% today. And all I can say is that in this particular environment, I think we're going to be looking at a rotational rally together with a rotational correction in certain areas. Oh, is that the end of the show? My goodness, that's the end of the show. And you just, if you're in particular uh, um, stocks that are kind of under the radar or had been under the radar and now coming into focus, stay there. Don't get nervous about the market, but you've got to have tight stops. And just remember, climbing a wall of worry is one thing. Climbing a barbed wire fence is another. Have a great